Should you snap the wrist or should you be focusing more on pronation through that point of contact on your serve? Now, when it comes to tennis, no shot is more important than your serve. And when it comes to the serve, there are so many aspects involved that sometimes we can become overwhelmed with the amount of information that's available, especially now on YouTube. So many new channels have popped up. So many new coaches are making these lessons. And sometimes you can watch one lesson from one channel and another lesson from another channel and be very confused thinking, who is correct here? Now there's a very famous video going around on the web right now where the coach is describing to a student how he should snap the wrist through that point of contact. When I was younger, I had someone teach me to snap the wrist and I thought in my mind, snapping the wrist meant going from this bent back position to this position here where the wrist is snapping through that point of contact. And if you're using, let's say a weak continental grip or you're using an Eastern forehand grip and you're trying to snap the wrist, think about the amount of stress that you're putting on the wrist joint. Now I ended up getting injured because of that and I spent a few months away from the game because someone had told me I should snap the wrist during the serve. Now during that time away with that injury, what I did was went back to the drawing board and saw exactly what the players were doing on their serve in slow motion. So players like Sampras, players like Goran Ivanisevic, Richard Krychek, All of the big servers at the time when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, I watched their serve. So I would watch hours and hours of matches just looking for those slow motion clips and I'd analyze what exactly they're doing during that point of contact. And I didn't see any single player doing this when they made contact. There's no player in the world that I know of who hits a consistently big serve who's snapping the wrist from this back position to this position during the point of contact. What I did notice was that all the players are using pronation. So what exactly is pronation and why is it so important to master on your serve? Now, if we're using the continental grip prior to contact, our racket should be on edge. So before I make contact, the side of the racket is leading the way. It almost looks as if I'm going to make contact with this side of my racket. Now at the last second, what happens is I go from this side on position to then my palm starts to turn. So I start to pronate into the point of contact. And then after contact, the pronation is complete. Prior to contact, racket's on edge, racket starts to open up, and then after contact, the racket will face the right side of the court if I'm a right-hander. So what exactly is supination and pronation in terms of your body? Now, if I put my hand like this with my palm facing the sky, in this position here, this is where my forearm is supinated. So this is supination. Now, once I apply this to the serve, it's going to look like this. So in this position, my forearm is now supinated in that back position, ready to then go into pronation. Now from this position, once I start to turn my palm towards my body like this, this is now pronating into a neutral position. So I've gone from a supinated position to a neutral position, but this has occurred from pronation. From this position, if I now turn my palm to the ground, that's full pronation. So supination, full pronation. And as you can see, this motion is all happening from my forearm. It's not happening from my wrist flexing or extending. It's just happening from my forearm going supination, pronation. Now, once I add the racket and I go above my head, it's going to look like this. Supination, pronating into a neutral position, and then after contact, full pronation. Now, if we can master this on the serve, you're going to have a huge edge on your serve because it allows you to then hit the different spins. It allows you to direct that ball much easier because trying to snap the wrist and direct the ball is a nightmare. 
but also mechanically, it's the best way for us to accelerate through that point of contact without being injured, because it's a natural way for me to throw a ball. If someone said to me, throw this tennis ball as far as you can, I wouldn't do this with my wrist. I wouldn't go like that. I have no power by snapping the wrist. What I would do is the normal throwing mechanics, and at the last second, my palm would go supination, pronation. And you can see this extremely well with baseball players when they're releasing the baseball. It's going supination, pronation. And that's happening from the forearm and the upper arm, the internal and external rotation of the shoulder. So it's all happening from the body releasing that ball or releasing the racket in the case of the serve in the most natural way, which allows us to still accelerate through that point of contact without then stressing the wrist. Now, if we go back to snapping the wrist, what happens is I'm holding this racket that weighs more than 340 grams. And at the same time, I'm snapping the wrist at high speeds. Think about the amount of stress I'm putting on my wrist joint, my elbow joint, and my shoulder joint. Now, eventually, if I keep doing that over the course of a few months, of course I'm going to get injured. Of course my wrist is going to break down, especially if you're serving with power. So by snapping the wrist, what's happening is I'm causing injury to myself, and also I'm not mechanically sound. I'm not able to actually accelerate properly because it's a very unnatural motion. If you look at what I'm trying to do here, it doesn't look natural, it doesn't look correct. And even just doing a few of those shadow serves, I can already start to feel some pressure in my wrist joint. So what we're trying to do is have that pronation through that point of contact instead of snapping the wrist. Now, a really good way for you to feel the difference between that pronation and that snapping of the wrist is to just throw a ball to your partner or to your coach where you're having the palm of the hand facing the head in this position. So I'm front on to the net. I'm in this position here with the palm. So the palm is facing my head now. And all I'm going to do is focus on releasing and pronating the arm fully. So I'm going from this position to this position as I throw. Once again, palm is facing my head. Palm is facing the right side of the court. So I'm going from this position to this position. I'm not focusing on turning. I'm not focusing on my legs. The only thing I'm doing is isolating this motion from here, supination, pronation. Supination, pronation. Now, once you start feeling comfortable doing that, you can then progress on to actually serving with holding the racket on the frame like this. So I'm still using what I would call the continental grip. Instead of being down here, I'm now sliding my hand up to the throat of the racket. This makes it much easier for me to then control that racket head and really feel what I'm doing. So I'm going from once again, this position, the bottom of the racket is facing down the court. The side of the strings I'm going to hit the ball with is facing my head. And once I start going up to the point of contact, that's when I open the racket and I should finish with the racket facing the right side of the court. So it's going to look like this, here to here. Supination, pronation. Supination, pronation. Once that starts to feel good, you can then slide the hand down to the top of the grip. So I'm holding the grip in this position here and doing the same motion. So once again, supination, pronation. Supination, pronation. I don't have to hit the ball hard. All I want to do is isolate that feeling of pronating through that point of contact. And finally, the last progression would then be holding the racket at the bottom of the grip. Once again, palm is facing my head. I'm in this position here, pronating, supination, pronation. And if you do those drills every session for a couple of weeks, after a few weeks, you should start to feel much more comfortable with this supination and pronation. It should start to feel like the easy way to actually hit your serve. Now, when you hit the serve and you're pronating, there will be some degree of wrist flexion and extension during that point of contact. But what's not happening is I'm not going from this position to this position without actually pronating. Prior to contact, my wrist might be laid back slightly. So I might be in this position here. And at the point of contact, I go into more of a neutral position with my forearm and my wrist. And then from this position, the pronation happens and I may have some degree of wrist flexion. So it's going from this position to this position to this position. 
But what's not happening is I'm not doing this and just snapping the wrist. It's happening from that pronation during the point of contact. And if I'm relaxed with my wrist, there may be some degree of wrist extension to wrist flexion during that contact and during that pronation phase, but it's not happening by me snapping the wrist consciously. So I hope this lesson will help you to understand better the importance of pronation on the tennis serve and why you should really avoid snapping your wrist consciously because that's a great way to then have injuries, ruin your serve, and it will cost you a lot of months and a lot of years of practice. Now, if you've enjoyed this lesson and you want more help with your serve, we have a free serve guide that you can download right away. I'll leave the link beneath this video. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys. Take care.